the Australian Tapestry Workshop is one of only a handful of tapestry workshops um, op operating in the world today. It was initially conceived as a very important artistic contribution to Australian creative life. Our artists were going overseas to have their tapestries made if they wanted to work in the medium and a number of very influential people thought that with Australian high quality wools and Australian artistic excellence that tapestries should be made here and the Tapestry Workshop's been operating successfully now for 34 years. Yeah, I've joined the board of the workshop about three years ago so part of my role is to be on the board and we talk about strategic direction uh, for the workshop uh, and also dealing with sort of legal issues as well. Uh, but for me it's uh, just a fantastic opportunity to to uh, be involved in pro bono work, which we regard as really, really important, uh, and in an area I love, which is, which is in the arts. What is very important, I think, in differentiating us from other tapestry workshops is the importance that we place on working with contemporary artists, working with our weavers to create contemporary tapestries. This is where the real true collaborative process happens, is that Sally came in actually yesterday and looked at our samples, and we were able to say to her, um, this, is, this is an indication of what we're going to do with your tapestry. We have this dyed in-house, we've got a dye, um, a colour laboratory um, and a dye in-house and we have a range of about 370 wool colours and about uh, oh, 200 and something cottons as well. I got involved at the beginning of this year when I rotated into M&A and started working for Paul Quinn. Personally I didn't know that the workshop existed and I think it's really fantastic and have wanted to tell everyone I can about it so that as many people as possible will visit. We have been available um, to act for them in whatever capacity they require. So the main two areas that we've worked in have been um, corporate advice and also intellectual property advice. And often those two things have gone hand in hand for the workshop because of the nature of the work and the activities. Professionally it's been great because it just gives me sort of exposure to different areas, being involved in the board and strategic direction, uh, particularly going through the GFC and the impact that has. Um, uh, that's been just fascinating and dealing with a broader group of people uh, and being involved in you know, the production of some you know, amazing works like the one you see behind me here which will be going to, to the Rome Embassy. So the tapestries you see in places um, that you'll regularly go to, they're in Parliament House, they're in the National Gallery. Uh, they're at the airport, they're at the MCG, um, and they're in embassies around the world. Because of the way that the tapestries are created, so they have an artist who designs the work, that's then um, used as the basis for the tapestry, which is woven by a number of weavers. Um, questions of intellectual property ownership and, and who's really the artist of the work um, have arisen in quite a unique way. So that's been really interesting when things like um, the Resale Royalties Act has to be applied. Um, it's been far more um, complicated than it would be in normal circumstances. I had my eye on the David Noonan work, which unfortunately has just sold for significantly more than I could have ever afforded to <laughs> pay for it. So, um, no, I think I'll just have to stick to visiting the workshop for now. <laughs>